Before I introduce Naomi, uh, the provost's office helped provided funding uh, for this event here at K-State. And actually, this is a three-part funding uh, exercise. Um, this was a, an effort that's supported by uh, University of Kansas, uh, Kansas State University, and Fort Hayes State University uh, to bring Naomi out here. And so um, we need to give credit to all three uh, universities and Bob Hooper for kind of starting this endeavor as well. The other thing I need to mention too that on the K-State end, we have two NSF uh, projects that's helping support climate change, both understanding the science, adaptation, mitigation, uh, and education uh, activities um, that will be carried out over the next several years. So. Uh, it, it's an opportune time to kind of kick off those two projects as well. So with that, I guess I introduce our speaker, it's Dr. Norma uh, Oreskes. Uh, she's one of the leading historians uh, of science. Uh, she received her PhD in science history, but also in uh, geosciences at Stanford. Uh, so it's kind of a unique uh, mix uh, there for her academic degree. Um, she's a professor of uh, history and science studies at the University of California, San Diego. And no, they do not have a football team. We were just talking <laughs> about that. Um, and then she's also an adjunct professor of geosciences at the Scripps Institute uh, of Oceanography. Uh, her research focuses on consensus and dissent in science. So it's not just, and you'll hear about that, uh, not just uh, climate change. Uh, she's won numerous prizes for her work and lectured widely in diverse venues, ranging from Madison, Wisconsin, uh, different civic clubs in the U.S., and also the U.S. Air Force Research Lab. Um, her essay in 2004 was uh, on the scientific consensus on climate change, was cited um, uh, by uh, in Al Gore, and led to the op-ed piece in the Washington Post, L.A. Times, and uh, San Francisco Chronicle. And she's also testified to Congress um, on the U.S. Senate Committee on Environmental Public Works. Uh, her research, Naomi's research, has highlighted the discontent, uh, disconnect, connect, sorry, <laughs> um, between the state of scientific debate and the way it's being presented in the mass media. And we talked a lot, uh, for those that were participating in discussions today, about scientific communication. And then it's how it's perceived by the American people. So in her latest effort, she's written several uh, academic books, and so then uh, she wrote um, this last uh, piece that was that you see titled here, Merchants of Doubt, um, and how people have been trying to confuse um, um, uh, science uh, and, and scientific issues. So uh, with that, we're, it's a real pleasure to have Naomi here, and we'll enjoy listening to her presentation. There'll be discussion uh, afterwards, so. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thanks, Chuck, for that kind introduction. It's nice to be here. You know, I suppose I grew up in the generation before Netflix and DVDs when waiting for The Wizard of Oz to be on TV every year was a big event. So, you know, Kansas was home. And since I grew up in the other Manhattan, now I feel like I'm really home. Uh, and I can now say I've been to the Big Apple and the Little Apple. So it's nice to be here in Kansas. It's also especially nice. I want to just reiterate um, Professor Rice's comment. A lot of time, academic institutions are competitive with each other, especially when they do play football. Really nice to be in a place where three different universities got together to bring me out here um, and to speak here and in Lawrence and in Fort Hayes, and especially to uh, acknowledge Bob Hooper, who's a real local hero, who has been doing incredible work to try to educate the people of Kansas about the truth about global warming. Um, so I'm really indebted to him for his effort to bring me out here tonight. Oh, and I also want to just also thank my co-author, Eric Conway, who's also a historian of science and technology, um, who was fully a co-author and partner on this project. So in 2005, my governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, announced that California would have a green energy initiative to commit the state of California to reducing greenhouse gas emissions to the levels that would be indicated by the Kyoto Protocol of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. And when Governor Schwarzenegger announced this initiative, he said, quote, I say the debate is over. We know the science, we see the threat, and we know that the time for action is now. Well, as a historian of science, I was very impressed by this. We often complain that, that politicians don't get science right, but I thought that my governor was, in fact, correct. 
And indeed, in the mid-2000s, it seemed that the majority of the American people had gotten the message about the reality of climate science and the threat that climate change represents. The Yale Project on Climate Change, working with the Gallup polling organization in 2007, showed that 72% of Americans were fully or completely convinced that global warming was indeed happening. In fact, 62% of American citizens believed that life on Earth would continue without major disruptions only if society takes immediate action to reduce global warming. And in the mid-2000s, it seemed that even many former skeptics and contrarians, people who had up to that point doubted the scientific evidence, appeared to be coming around. So, for example, Frank Luntz, the Republican strategist, said, it's now 2006. So that was good. He was off to a good start. He got the date right. <laughs> I think most people would conclude that there is global warming taking place and that the behavior of humans are affecting the climate. Now, Luntz was important. He was famous, some might say infamous, because he was the author of a 2003 memo to Republican candidates for Congress in which he gave them advice about how to address the vulnerability of Republican candidates on environmental issues. Polls consistently showed, both then and now, that the American people do care about the environment and do want our government to take action to protect it. And in general, Democrats have been perceived in the last decade or two as being more sympathetic to environmental issues than Republicans. So he advised Republican candidates to address this by using the phrase climate change rather than global warming because he wrote, climate change is a lot less frightening than global warming. One of the pages of this memo, it's a 200-page document, he wrote, winning the global warming debate, and he, he stressed or he advised that Republicans could win the global warming debate if they emphasized the scientific uncertainty and if they insisted, contra Governor Schwarzenegger, that in fact there was no scientific consensus. And Luntz wrote, the scientific debate remains open. Voters believe there is no consensus that global warming, no consensus about global warming within the scientific community. Should the public come to believe that the scientific issues are settled, their views about global warming would change accordingly. Therefore, you need to continue to make the lack of scientific certainty a primary issue in the debate. So we see here the idea of scientific uncertainty being invoked as a tool for winning elections. But Luntz's position was not factually correct. The scientific debate was not still open. In 2001, the Intergovernmental pa Panel on Climate Change, the world's leading expert organization of climate scientists, had written, quote, human activities are modifying the concentration of atmospheric constituents that absorb or scatter radiant energy. Most of the observed warming over the last 50 years is likely to have been due to the increase in greenhouse gas concentrations. So the scientific community had already clearly stated that there was global warming occurring, that it had been significant in the last 50 years, and that the most likely cause of it was the increase in greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere. 